It's very nice to see you, old friends, and I think some of you have heard uh, this part of this lecture, so I, excuse me. Uh, my topic is uh, uh, about consciousness, uh, about the mind, which is a philosophical topic, uh, and uh, uh, Sweden have no philosophers. Uh, have had n the only one is Descartes, who died here, uh, and uh, for uh, uh, the French people, there are several French uh, visitors here, I think they should visit his house where he died in Old Town. Consciousness is regarded as a little airy fairy, touchy feely, but uh, I think this is what it's all about. I, I mean, you can't study gastrointestinal organ without studying digestion, you can't study the brain without studying the mind. And, uh, and I think particularly the an infant is of a, a great interest. But the philosophers, they are mainly interested of, uh, the main topic they discuss is what is it like to be a bat? Uh, it's a famous philosopher, Thomas Nagel. Uh, and uh, it's lying, uh, sitting upside down like a fetus, and, uh, uh, but um, he has no vision, uh, uh, and he emits uh, high-pitched squawks, squeaks, well, it flies. So they are very different in many ways, but we, it's very difficult to see how is it to be a bat. But the philosophers seldom ask how is it to be a baby or how is it to be a, a, f a fetus, and that's what I want to uh, discuss. I think Heidelis Als has uh, been uh, inspired me. Uh, I was a physiologist. Uh, I was trained as a physiologist before I went to neonatology, and so I had been working with field sheep and, and, and so I, when I came to the neonatal ward and I thought this was a very interesting from a physiological point, I was mainly interested in respiration. So what, what Heidelise did was she opened my eyes for something else uh, and uh, just this story, I'm not quite sure it's correct, Heidelise will correct me, but uh, uh, my mentor who was actually a brain scientist, um, uh, uh, Kurt von Euler, he invited uh, Frank Duffy, you know, had known for some time, and his wife Heidelis uh, to a conference in, in Stockholm, your biology of early infant behavior. And then uh, Kurt said, I think you should ask uh, Heidelis to give a talk also for the clinicians and uh, for the uh, uh, nurses in the hospital. And uh, I did that, and I usually forget most of my lect the lectures I listen to, but I, I, st I certainly remember this lecture, at least how <laughs> Heidelis uh, brought the message to look at the uh, infant as a person, as a uh, conscious uh, uh, individual with a mind, uh, which I hadn't realized. Uh, and then uh, uh, I, I think uh, also Bjorn and Agneta who were there were very impressed. Uh, they were so impressed that so they went to Boston and wanted to learn the NEATCAP, and then they went back to uh, the uh, a little hospital in Falun and did a study, the first study in Sweden, but it was um, uh, not a randomized control study, so uh, we, uh, I discussed with Bjorn we should do a randomized control study. I was a little skeptical, in, we must admit, but then, uh, and we had a lot of problems because uh, the Swedish economy was in <laughs> very bad shape, so we had difficulties uh, uh, with the economy, etc. But anyway, we did it and published it in uh, pediatric. So that was the first uh, uh, Swedish and maybe the uh, European study showing that uh, the uh, outcome of uh, this uh, uh, care uh, w improved. <coughs> I just want to show, uh, uh, I was interviewed for a German uh, newspaper Frankfurt Allgemeine, uh, and I think the title I liked, the, I didn't say the title, but and also the baby, Das die Geburt des Ich, the birth of the I. Let's go back to consciousness. What, what is it? Uh, it, it, it? Philosophers talk about the heart problem. How does the brain get o us over the hump from electrochemistry uh, to subjective uh, feeling? And uh, uh, it's a little difficult to define, but I mean, if you look in Webster's or in uh, dictionaries, it's like uh, awareness of the body and oneself and the outside world. The state or activity that is characterized by sensation and emotion, volition or thought. And Jerry Edelman, who's a Nobel Prize winner, and, uh, they had Guillo uh, Tononi, they had a model here where mainly the cortex is involved, but also thalamus and basal 
uh, uh, ganglia, uh, and there's some correlation activity. We, we, uh, the neuroscientists discuss a lot if is there a special site for consciousness or is it spread over the whole brain? And there's some controversy about that. But no one has detected any specific neurons, cluster of neurons, which are responsible for consciousness. But I think we can agree that uh, uh, to a uh, large extent consciousness is uh, mainly in the co cerebral cortex, which is about tenfold uh, bigger or uh, volume or the surfaces like, uh, for example, our uh, cousins, the primates. W what happens if you have no cortex uh, if you uh, have uh, an encephalic uh, um, uh, children. And actually, there's been a study by uh, Bjorn Merker, who was at MIT for several years, but then moved back to Sweden. He interviewed parents to uh, child encephalic children. They were, uh, I mean, they, some of them survived to five to 10 years old. And he also went with these children to Disneyland uh, in Florida. And uh, he saw uh, they are blind, they co don't communicate, talk, don't, talk, don't talk, but they express emotion and they express some awareness. So this has been a lot of discussion to what extent they are um, uh, conscious, but not conscious in the way we define it. I think to be conscious, to become conscious, the thalamocortical uh, pathways have to be established uh, and uh, Kostovich in uh, Croatia uh, showed uh, 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 that uh, this connection starts uh, around 24 weeks and gets established when the baby is full term. But before 23, 24 weeks, uh, it's impossible to, uh, the sensory input from vision or uh, lis hearing, etc., pain doesn't reach the the cortex, you cannot be aware, you cannot be conscious about. The only thing which goes, uh, passes by thalamus is smell, actually, which is quite interesting. But <coughs> so uh, wh what about the fetus? Can the fetus uh, be conscious? Certainly we know that uh, fetus react to pain from maybe 15 to 20 week. It reacts to smell and tastes and uh, it hears. <coughs> and uh, uh, it has also uh, learning some language, which I will talk a little about. <coughs> so the fetus can smell from about the 20th week. It seems to like sweet tastes, but grimaces when it's exposed to acid or bitter tastes, and remember good and bad tastes and smell. So it remains, so if you eat a lot of garlic, if you're pregnant, uh, uh, the um, uh, children seem to remember that and continue to eat garlic. I don't know if they're French. A recent study by uh, um, uh, Reed uh, uh, in uh, uh, England, Durham, I think it's quite interesting. What she did was to have a light torch, which she put on the abdomen of the mother and directed towards the uh, retina of the fetus. Uh, and uh, there were three points, like a face, uh, here, uh, with two eyes and mouth. And when the fetus saw this, it turned its head towards this figure, but it didn't turn it towards uh, the, 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 uh, this figure, which is the upside down. Uh, so, they, uh, so when you show this, they, they turn the feet head usually away. So, so it looks like the fetus already has some uh, uh, innate ability to recognize uh, faces. <coughs> uh, and of course, uh, I think this uh, uh, stimulation from the mother, uh, when the mother is singing or uh, uh, talking, or, uh, uh, it's very important, and uh, we miss that. Uh, or it's very important to substitute that, that wh when we have our uh, preterm infants. And as I mentioned, uh, the fetus seem to so here we have exposed uh, uh, a child to uh, it doesn't sound okay. uh, to um, uh, Swedish vowel, typical Swedish vowel is U, and also a, a typical English vowel E. A and when um, 
the, uh, we did this study together with Patricia Kuhl and Christine Moon in Seattle and Stockholm, and it looked like, uh, okay, now it works. Uh, so uh, the Swedish uh, infants, they seem to recognize E, U, uh, U, like because U doesn't exist in English. So then they sucked fairly regular, but then suddenly they hear E, and there was something new. Then they sucked differently, and it's the other way around in Seattle. So the American <coughs> infants recognized E, so they sucked fairly regular, and then U, that was a surprise, and then they changed uh, the sucking uh, event. And, <coughs> and um, there's a study from um, uh, by Friedrich in Leipzig, uh, together with uh, Dr. Mempe, psychologist, uh, and they looked on, uh, uh, they, they analyzed the crying of French and German uh, babies, newborn babies, uh, and uh, uh, the French babies, they cried, it's going up, I mean, they cried Paris, while the German babies, they cry, it goes down, and like between Paris. So here you can see the pattern. So you learn actually the language to some extent already uh, as a fetus. But I don't think the fetus is really conscious. It's mainly asleep, although it opens its eyes, but even if you're unconscious, you can open the eyes. It's sedated by a lot of uh, neurohormones, pregnanolone, adenosine, and uh, prostaglandin. It seems to be asleep, mainly in active sleep or uh, REM sleep. Uh, and it's also making breathing uh, uh, movements. And furthermore, as you know, the fetus is living at a very low oxygen level. Uh, an English, a British physiologist coined the expression Mount Everest in utero to make it a little more exciting for physiologists to study. Uh, and uh, the PO2 is about the same as um, uh, on Mount Everest, something like 30 millimeter of mercury. And that, of course, is suppressive fetus. It's weightless, it has limited gastrointestinal movements. <coughs> it's probably not aware of pain. But, uh, of course, the consciousness of the fetus can uh, uh, be uh, discussed. I, I don't know, we, I don't think we have the final answer yet. But we can certainly say that something remarkable happens at birth, the stress of being born, and uh, it's just, uh, when the fetal head is squeezed and uh, you acti uh, activate a lot of neurohormones. We have been mainly interested in catecholamines, and uh, as you can see, the catecholamine levels of uh, a newborn, normal newborn infants is much higher, about 25 five, five, twen times higher than in resting adult. Uh, and if it's asphyxiated or strangulated by the umbilical cord, it can be even higher. And this is much higher than in adults during stress, the mother during parturition. This is remarkable. When uh, we showed this for uh, adult ed endocrinologists, they didn't believe us. And there is also a search of a number, number of other neurohormones. Uh, and this starts during labor, uh, and we have taken scalp blood samples. Before uh, labor, it's uh, fairly low, uh, about the adult level. And another thing which is important is awakening at birth. And uh, we know from rat studies, which I actually did in Lyon, Michel, Mac, Pequignon, that um, uh, the locus ceruleus, which is a little uh, cluster of uh, neurons, blue, is uh, uh, kind of blue, and it's in, in the brain stem, and it spreads out neuronodic neurons in the whole brain. It's important for arousal, and, and uh, this seems to be activated. Uh, at birth, so the newborn baby is very awake at, uh, after birth, and then after an hour or so, they falls asleep. And uh, you can also see this activity of locus ceruleus by the large pupils. Even if it's uh, very light in the room, you can see how, how uh, the big uh, pupils. And I think this is very important also for the parents to see, the, for the parental infant bonding to see this open eyes. It's usually uh, the first hour after birth, uh, earlier we put in uh, silver nitrate in the eyes, which I don't think was very good. So uh, uh, the onset of uh, breathing is uh, very 
uh, crucial, of course, and uh, uh, it l seems that uh, it looks like the cooling of the baby is very important. And Peter Karlberg, who worked here at Karolinska, but then moved to Gothenburg, he did a remarkable study, which was not really published, but he took, uh, some of you have heard the story, but uh, he took a newborn baby after a cesarean section and plunged it into lukewarm water, and then it stopped to breathe. And then he took up the baby, and it started to cry and, and <coughs> and breathe, and then he plunged it again into the wat warm water and continued uh, until the midwives stopped him. <laughs> but why I am talking about breathing, I am talking talk about consciousness, because I mean the old idea is that uh, consciousness is, is pneuma, is spiritus. So uh, w when you take the first breath, uh, life starts, uh, and uh, in the modern uh, where uh, the Nafil Council of Bioethics, they say, when the newborn encompasses the capacity to breathe either independently or with the support of a ventilator, it's a moral and legal point when life must be preserved independent of gestational age. So this goes back to Galen, uh, <laughs> in Hellenistic uh, doctor, many years ago. Okay, so now we come to the um, uh, newborn and uh, uh, I think the newborn certainly is consciousness. It wasn't believed before. Uh, and it's awake, it's aware of self perception, showing emotions and language. And uh, for example, the, the newborn infant seems to be able to perceive its own body. So when you touch a newborn baby, uh, it behaves differently as uh, compared when it touches uh, himself. Uh, I think everyone has seen this uh, uh, photo uh, by Medson Moore, published in Science, 1977, uh, showing that the newborn baby can imitate an adult uh, soon after birth. This uh, study has actually been questioned recently. Uh, and they think it's not, uh, uh, because this shows uh, some kind of intellectual or cognitive capacity, but, um, uh, but I could at least confirm it. Uh, I think when we talk about uh, consciousness, we also must discuss uh, emotions. Uh, uh, that's an important uh, part. And, and uh, f Australian uh, physiologist Denton, he, he talks about primordial uh, emotions like hunger, thirst, pain, uh, hunger for air. And that uh, uh, the fetus is not hungry or is not thirsty or it uh, may be feel pain, but. Uh, so uh, some that's also an important uh, change at birth. A and music seems to elicit uh, emotional uh, respiratory movements. So, so when you play Mozart, some many of you have seen this, but you, the baby's uh, breathing very regular, but then when you play Stravinsky, the breathing becomes very irregular, and then uh, it becomes regular again when you play Mozart. This is the same as an adult. But in the adult, they exposed uh, the subjects to Stockhausen's atonal music, and I think that would have killed babies. <laughs> uh, last year, a famous French uh, obstetrician, François uh, Le Boyer, uh, 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 died. But he was very famous. I don't know how many remember him, but uh, he published uh, a book uh, about um, uh, the violence of birth. And he claimed that the normal birth, uh, and particularly if it's uh, a lot of instruments are used, forceps or whatever, uh, it's very bad for the newborn baby, and that it, uh, he or she suffers, and they talk about soft deliveries, etc. Uh, and the book was translated to all languages. Uh, and my uh, predecessor, Professor John Lind, he was a little skeptical about this, so he took a lot of photos of newborn babies, uh, and he claimed that the newborn baby actually looks fairly happy. This is after only one hour after uh, birth. Uh, I, I don't think um, a normal, uh, the baby who's delivered normally is unhappy, uh, and I think there's an activation of the hedonic brain circuits, uh, as shown by Morten uh, Kringelbach he, here, the dopaminergic system. Okay, uh, I, I will mainly talk about the newborn preterm infant, but just to mention that uh, two months uh, revolution 
Colin Trevartan, who actually last spoke at the last uh, meeting. Uh, he, he, this is his picture, but there are two months you can see how, how the baby communicates with the uh, uh, mother, and uh, if the mother uh, freezes uh, her face, the baby will be cancelled and desperate. Uh, it's quite interesting if this, this painting by Tizian in Louvre, uh, because uh, the baby is not so interested of the rabbit. It's very important for the baby to involve the grandmother and the mother uh, in uh, see, look at me, not to, don't look at the rabbit. It's I'm the center. <coughs> of course, when we talk about uh, recognizing faces uh, and uh, to what extent does the baby recognize the mother uh, and, and, and father. Uh, and this starts, uh, we have tested this, this starts a little later. Uh, I mean, they already seem to recognize faces immediately after birth. But um, uh, we tested six months old uh, babies. Uh, and first they were looking on the screen, gray screen, uh, and then the mother, and then gray screen, and then an unknown person. Uh, and, and then they, uh, when they saw the mother, they seemed to recognize her. Uh, but not uh, the other nurse, and uh, we also monitor the uh, above uh, the fusiform uh, uh, cortex, uh, the uh, cerebral activity, but with near infrared spectroscopy, uh, and, and we, we have talked about grandmother neurons. We have some neurons in, in the temporal lobe uh, which seem to recognize uh, celebrities and uh, uh, ma grandmothers. And uh, why uh, I think this is of some interest for us who work with preterm infants, because um, Jakob Frie and uh, <coughs> Pierre Kuhn has also been involved in uh, his studies, uh, showed uh, that if uh, normal babies, when they look and see the mother's face, they react. Uh, we can see that with near infrared spectroscopy. But the preterm infants, they don't seem to react. Uh, to recognize the mothers to the same extent as the full-term babies. A and we have actually seen uh, quite a number of, f quite a few uh, uh, ex premies who have um, uh, seemed to suffer from face blindness, prosopagnosia. I think it's a problem uh, which uh, we should be uh, aware of. So, uh, we can say that the infant and toddler have a lot of criteria, fulfill a lot of criteria of being conscious, like self-awareness, perception, emotion, some memory, etc. But of course, uh, the language is not very well developed. Uh, if you compare an adult, he's aware of, uh, you are aware uh, of what has happened and you plan for the future. The baby doesn't do that to the same extent. Five minutes? Okay. <laughs> So, uh, what, what does the stream of consciousness, which uh, was uh, um, uh, expressed by, uh, coined by uh, William James, correspond at a bi physical uh, level? And then uh, I think this spontaneous resting state activity or the default mode network uh, is very important. This is from adult. Uh, we have collaborated with Peter Franson, and, and we actually discovered that uh, the infants have this uh, uh, resting state activity uh, and uh, they have about five hubs compared with adults who have ten pub, uh, hubs. And then you can do interesting graph analysis and it's the same as uh, you can compare it with, uh, this is a flight uh, map of Lufthansa and there are certain centers like Düsseldorf, Frankfurt, uh, etc. And then there are peripheral centers like Dublin, etc. And then you can make calculation where, where you uh, switch planes, etc. And you, say you can say use this math mathematical method to uh, study the brain, uh, which are the most important clusters of neurons where you uh, change uh, or which, uh, which are passed during thinking. And Peter uh, Franson did a study of this. And to, to the left, you can see an adult, and to the right, a baby. And if you uh, make a graph of this, uh, the uh, adult is insulated as one of these one very important clusters uh, or hubs. But an adult, his 
uh, uh, has his memories uh, here and thinking a lot about what happened and also plan for the future. The baby has very weak uh, uh, activity here, but it's mainly a somatosensory area. It's mainly thinking of what's going on now uh, when I'm uh, breastfeeding or whatever, uh, or when I feel pain. So, so, but he cannot plan for the future or uh, in the same way as an adult. Uh, and the area, the self-referential area, the eye, is very small, it's somewhere here compared, it's much bigger in, in the adult. So uh, finally, I just want to say a few words about the uh, preterm infants. So wh when does it uh, emerge? Uh, and um, uh, this I think I thought got from Anne-Sophie and Bjorn that they seem to be aware of sensory disturbances like pain, etc. We know that. Uh, and Marco Bartocci showed, and was also shown in uh, England by Rebecca Slater, that uh, uh, the cortex seemed to be activated by um, uh, pain. Uh, this is a uh, puncture and we studied with near infrared spectroscopy. So, uh, which wasn't really shown. You know, we thought that pain was mainly a reflex reaction, but uh, now we know, both from England and here, that uh, cortex is activated. I think I skipped the next slide. And I, furthermore, I think it's also important for being conscious is to uh, express joy or hedonic feelings. And uh, how many minutes? <laughs> okay. Uh, you are all familiar. Uh, uh, th this is from the Express study. I'm not quite sure if you're going to talk about this more, but anyway, uh, we were quite active with the 23 week and 22 weekers, and, and of course we have some problems. A and um, uh, uh, what I think is our main problem now, studied mainly by uh, Elrique Odin, uh, that uh, uh, these uh, babies below, uh, born before 27 weeks, have uh, uh, signs of autistic spectrum disorder, about 14%. And already at two and a half years, they had an uh, abnormal social responsiveness scale. And this has been shown by various groups in the uh, United States and in uh, uh, England and Norway also. So, so this is our uh, weak uh, concern. Uh, and Nelly Padilla in our group, she has shown that there are morphological differences of areas with, ha have with social communication behavior uh, uh, they are smaller in the autistic spectrum uh, instance. Uh, <coughs> finally, I, I want to s propose a little provocative uh, suggestion. Uh, when autism was discovered or described first, uh, um, it was um, uh, Leo Kanner, uh, was just after the war, and also Asperger. Uh, but then there was a, a theory of the refrigerator. Uh, mother theory that the mothers were very cool and uh, had didn't express any warmth towards the baby. Of course, this was completely wrong, uh, and we thought think now also that autism is mainly genetic. I'm not quite sure whether Lisbeth Salander was preterm, but anyway. <coughs> but what I think is intriguing is that um, uh, Roberta Pineda in St. Louis sh sh she showed. Uh, uh, that the outcome of infants who were I very isolated, they were in private rooms, uh, and the mothers uh, never came, very seldom came just for a short while, and there was only one person in the room and not talking with the baby. And, and this uh, infant seemed to uh, have a de delayed language development, and also uh, the, you can see it on the sp uh, default mode network by Christopher S uh, Smyser that uh, it was uh, less developed. Uh, and we I don't think we can say that uh, autism in these preterm infants can be genetic. I think it must be uh, environmental, and that's the reason. Uh, so, so I'm proposing incubator uh, um, hypothesis instead of a refrigerator um, uh, hypothesis. Uh, so uh, to pr uh, uh, I think therefore it's so important to do this intervention. The baby fetus, uh, the uh, preterm infant should 
uh, feel like he is back in the uh, uh, womb, uh, as uh, Heidelisa has uh, said, uh, should, should try to create an environment like that. And in that, I think it's also important to uh, speak to the infant and, and sing for it, etc. And there are several, you know, kangaroo care, <coughs> developmental care, family nurture intervention. I guess you will can discuss these methods later. And, and what was going to what was uh, why it's so important is uh, uh, the mechanism may be uh, epigenetic, and particularly if you're very uh, young or immature, we, we know that we can change the other strand uh, of the uh, the double helix by methylation and deventilation. In studies in animals, which has been confirmed in humans, is that. Uh, uh, if you take well care of your offspring uh, and groom and uh, uh, <coughs> try to uh, uh, stimulate it, it uh, develops better than if you just neglect uh, her. That's it. Thank you. Uh, these are my collaborators. <laughs> and this is the end. <laughs>